Hello, our lovely viewers, teacher, taking you through the biology paper three. Usually we call it the practical. I am your facilitator, Sir Kwame Amwate, who will take you through all the do's and don'ts required for us to face this week's exams. Our main aim today is not to teach in the sense of teaching, but it's to help you to gain more marks in your exams. If you've written the first part, probably didn't go well, you have a chance to face an 80 mark paper. You can do well and score over 70 marks to 80, adding up to the other marks and still get a good grade. So today, our aim is to help you get more marks. Our second aim is to help you avoid the pitfalls. You think you've written something, but that may not be the way we expect you to write it. Also to follow instructions. And also to make the task easy because we'll present a similar or familiar type of questions that usually face us in the exams. So let's begin today's lesson. We'll start with the format of the questions, how the questions are presented to us in the exams. It may come in the following ways. Study the specimen. Identify the specimen. Classify the specimen. State observable features. Then we get into the adaptation type of questions. They may also usually ask you for the habitat. Then you get into biological drawings. We'll also look at description, explanation, how to tackle experimental questions. Then those are called the other questions. Some include food chain, evolutionary trend, or order of complexity. It may also ask you for genetic questions, relationship between two things or two specimens, biological interest, and what we faced recently, graphs in our exams. Who knows, it can reappear. So let's begin with the first part. Whenever you get to the exams room, the practical exams room, you see specimen. I use the word specimen for now. Not all specimen are organisms. So you see specimen with labels on them dotted around your room. The first thing on your paper that you open is that Study carefully so so and so specimen. As a student, your job is to write A, B, C, D, then go around and look for which one is A. Definitely, there will be a label on the specimen A. Write it down, and you have the liberty to pick it up. If you are wearing the gloves, pick it up, look at everything. If you think something is not in order, you can prompt your technician or your teacher. For example, if they give you a cockroach and you feel there's one leg missing, you have the right to ask your teacher, is that how they expected you to bring it or something is wrong? If it's wrong, he will tell you so that you do the right things. So they'll tell you to study carefully. The word is just study it with your eyes or touch it or use any equipment that you require to be able to study it well. Maybe a hand lens or put a slide under a microscope, anything. Just study it well. So on your screen, you have, let's say, specimen C, a praying mantis, a D, a tadpole, at internal gill stage, a larva of a housefly, adult housefly, a spider, chicken, and a bat. We assume this was in your room. As we go along, each slide, I'll change the organism so that we have perspective on more organisms. So you just study it. They didn't say do anything. Just study it. Now, before we go on, let me show you. This is your paper three. It's a constrained paper. So usually, they would rule lines on the paper for you. Any instruction, there will be lines there. So it's not the old format where it's a plain paper that you have to do anything. So you follow the instructions. They say list two things. They will give you only two lines. 
they say state four difference, they will give four a, a table of four lines. So please, please use the paper well. Note we don't give extra paper for this particular exams. It's only one paper. You can cancel, but know where you have to write your answers. After studying carefully the specimen, the next thing they will tell you to identify the organisms. So those things that I just, we just showed you on the previous slide, which was what was in the room, that you went around to observe them, they will tell you to identify it. They will tell you to identify with that reason, identify it with reason, whatever they will tell you. So identification means that once you know what is there, tell us what that thing is. So if you saw specimen C and it's a praying mantis, just write praying mantis. If it's D, it's a tadpole, just write tadpole. If it's E, lava of house fly. On your screen, I intentionally left something, a mistake we usually do in the exams. The P, the praying mantis. The praying mantis should always start with a capital P. Any one word question they ask you in practicals or in theory, always start with a capital letter. So tadpole, capital T. Lava, capital L. Adult starts with this way. Spider, big S. Chicken, big C. Bat, a big B. We usually see students do these mistakes and they lose marks. Simple marks. Don't let this happen. So you just have to write these things down. That's all they ask. So do you see four marks at the side? So if you write correctly, we don't want scientific names. If you know the scientific name, fine. But if you know the common names, we like that one a lot. So cockroach. Don't go and write uh, blatter orientalis. Just is cockroach. Write cockroach. And get four marks for these things. Then they will go on to ask you the next type of questions. Classify. So on your screen, I've given you different ways that they will ask you the same question. So they say classify or name the phyla, class, and order to which, let's say, specimen D or specimen F is a cockroach or specimen G, if it's a grasshopper, belong, belong. So if Cockroach belongs to Atropoda. You write Atropoda. If it belongs to, let's say, the class Insecta, go on Insecta. If it goes to the other form, Ethiopia, write it. And remember, start with a capital. So Atropoda, capital A. Then you continue. You don't need to underline anything. Now the next statement on your screen is the same thing they ask in different ways. State one, two, or three observable features, characteristics of the phylum, class, and other mentioned in AI. So you see, the first one they just said mentioned the phylum, class, and other. Now they say give us reasons why you say they belong to Atropoda. That's all they are going to ask. At this stage, never write anything in Tena or anything you cannot see with your eyes. So mostly we advise that you write only external features or things you can see with your eyes. So Atropoda, you can see the chitinous exoskeleton. You can see the jointed appendages. So keep the simple ones too. When we mark particles, we are not interested in long statements. Usually, our statements are very short, like phrases. Possesses chitinous exoskeleton. Who stop? Presence of jointed appendages. Who stop? Just three words, four words, five words. We are done. So you go to, let's say, the class, insecta. 
Why do you say they belong to class in sector? Simple. Presence of three pairs of legs. A pair of antenna. Body divided into three divisions. See how I put it. Body divided into three divisions. A pair of antenna. Uh, uh, three. Uh, let's say the two are divided into three parts. Something simple. Always in a short form. Now, when they say three, let's say mention two things. Don't go and mention three, four things here. With practicals, assume you mention four things, and the first two are wrong. For practicals, you mark the first two, and don't mark the next two downwards. So you have to be sure of what you are writing. For the theory, which you just wrote, it's under the acts, state three things, or mention three. You can mention five. We'll look, go through and look for the best three. But in practicals, no. Just go straight to two things and make sure they are correct. You don't have a second chance. Another form of action is that state two observable features each of specimen D, E. Characteristics of their phyla and class is the same thing. Give the class of each specimen. So you just give them. State two, this one they specify state to any observable features that they limited you what you can see on the organism that on each specimen to support your conclusion what they meant was that you wrote that it belonged to class in sector what things on their body that you can observe that make you conclude that it belongs here just write those things give one reason in each case state Given one reason in each case, state the class and order of specimen, let's say E and J. So if you know specimen E and J, they are, they are class and order, they are asking you give a reason for that. So on the slide, everything is the same. No matter how they trick it or they change the words, they want the same. The class or the taxa and the reason. Who stop. Usually, if they ask for phylon one mark, class one mark, other one mark, and they ask for two, two reasons. It means that on that score, you have about nine marks. Remember, the first one was identified about four marks. You are going about 13 marks. Remember, capitals should start with single words. Then we move on to biological drawings. Most it doesn't just appear at the early part. In any question, they are a little bit D, C, D, E, or something. But I'm bringing it here so that we can deal with biological drawing. On your screen, there are many ways of asking biological drawing questions. The common one is make a label drawing, and they will give you the dimension six to eight centimeters. Make sure that when you draw, it falls to six to eight centimeters. So what usually I tell my students is that have your ruler zero, you put just a dot. On number two, you put just a dot. At six, the point six, you put just a dot. And point eight, you put another dot. Just try and draw just below the point zero and end before the point eight. When you finish and you measure your drawing will be in that range so that you can get one mark for dimension. And they will insist, Dorsa, they may ask you any orientation you should draw. So this is what they ask in this question. So you are going to draw the Dorsa view. Another form was that remove all wings. And they will give you an instruction before you draw. Remove the wings of specimens, so so and so. Then make the drawing. Using a knife, Remove the operculum, then draw the head region, 10 to 12 centimeters. They said the lateral view, they insisted, the lateral view. So when you are stating your title, this is very important. What are you doing? You are making a drawing. Would you label it? Yes. So you say a label drawing. So from just the question, you can have your title. A label drawing. Don't bring the dimension because in the drawing, 
we'll get a dimension of the dorsal view of keep it simple and still keep it in specimen D. We don't penalize you for saying name for fecoco. We don't. But usually, the answers come in specimen D. Probably your identification was wrong. So if you use that one and it was wrong and you come and use it down there and you are doing a different thing, it leads us to something wrong. So just keep it in specimen D, specimen A, specimen E. Keep it like that. So another one is make a label drawing 6 to 7 centimeters long of specimen B to illustrate its. Now this one, they said when you draw, only illustrate its essential features. The same was on egg. Then another one was on the cut surface of tomatoes. Now let's look at requirements. Actually, when you go to the exam, so nobody is going to ask whether they expect you to bring a pencil. You are not a pen because we don't like you drawing in pen. But you write your answers in uh, normal statements in pen. But the drawing area, make sure everything is in pencil. If you mistakenly leave your things in pencil to be mark, but we advise that for the note part, use pen. But anything around the drawing area, use pencil. Even title, do well and use pencil. We require you to have a pencil that is about 15 centimeters long. Raising. When you are drawing, they expect you to, we expect you to put your palm here on the paper. With a long pencil, it's easy to draw around or move your pencil and get a smooth line, a, let's say a bold line, so that you don't need to clean many times. Because we look out for what we call outline. Outline means that when you are drawing, one side is a little bit deeper or thicker than the other side. Then we say something is not equal, so you lose for outline. Get a good eraser so that you can erase well. Then every drawing should have appropriate biological head, uh, heading. Then draw the outline first before you add details. The magnification, we expect you to also know how to calculate magnification. Don't do the magnification anywhere near the drawing. You can go into the back of the paper somewhere, then after that, clean it. Just bring the answer or the figure you got and write times one point so so and so. No centimeters, no millimeters, just times. Then rule guidelines, we'll see, we'll look at all this. So let's take a drawing of the fish. Let's take a drawing of the fish and use it. So this drawing, as we saw in the requirement, was that make a label drawing of the lateral view of the fish. You've drawn this beautiful fish. I'll show you mistakes that we usually do. One, we'll give you title. One for saying a label drawing. If you use diagram here, you get it wrong. In the theory you wrote, we accept that you use diagram there, you don't use drawing theory. In practicals, you use drawing, not diagram. This whole one, the title, if you just bring diagram, you lose one mark. Okay. Then state what you are drawing, the lateral view. If they say the longitudinal section, fine. Transverse section. Then you draw. Assuming you've drawn all this. We'll measure it. We'll put a ruler on it from the tail point. That's the longest side of your drawing. Then we'll give you size 1. If it doesn't reach or it's above, you get 0. So you can get anything 0 here. It's 1 or 0. We come to clarity of line. When you draw... We don't expect you to be doing this. Okay, let's draw somewhere here on the fish. This is woolly lines. We also don't expect you to be doing this. Usually, people will draw, they get to a point, then they want to continue because they remove the pencil. There will be this small gap here. Uh, this continuous line, and 
we have to penalize you by minus half. So the full mark here is one. If you make any of these mistakes, minus half. If you make this, this second one, another minus half, then you've gotten zero. So biology, as much as it's not so uh, it's slightly controversial, it's just because of you people don't follow instructions. Follow instructions, and you get all marks. And it's very technical. So clarity of line. Another clarity of line is, let's say you have the eyes, then you shade the eyes. You also get minus half. So the more the minus, <laughs> the one mark given to you is eroded. Now, neatness of label. Let's say you're supposed to label, and you label six things. Five of them, you use the ruler. Only one, you forgot to use the ruler, and we spotted that you use your free hand. That one, the full mark was supposed to be minus one, but once you use a free hand and then use a ruler, just for one out of six, you get minus half. If there are arrowheads, another minus half. If you should cross anything like this, another minus half. So a drawing that you can get 10 marks easily, you can also score zero or just get less than half. Okay. You can slant, maybe you want to point something, we have no problem. But when you are labeling, the dorsal has to be this way, not slanted, following how you rule the line. No. Okay, we have outline. I said outline means that if this side is a little bit thicker than the other two, you will lose marks. Usually, sometimes, depending on the marks, it's in the clarity of line or sometimes it's on its own. Then every drawing has eight unique features. So a fish probably will look out for lateral line and fence. We expect to see two or three of these unique things of the drawing. We may give different names to them. So let's say we say lateral line drawn, dorsal fin shown, uh, tail fin shown. Let's say these are the three things we want. Each of them will give you one mark. If it's not there, you lose marks. Then we have labels, L. Usually on the practicals, uh, marks goes from two, three. And when they say two things, are not, we are not looking for two. We give half mark to every label. So we are looking for four things to get two. If it's three marks, we are looking for six things to get two. So when we mark, let's say, skill, half, dosa half, tail fin, half. Then we'll multiply it and get your total number. Then your magnification. You've seen I've done it down here, just times whatever it is. Trust us, we will know. Don't just use any number in your head. We will know because there's something coming with your file of papers or pack of papers, and we know something is inside, so we will know. Don't do a guesswork. Okay. Now that you know this, let's, another tricky question is, let's say there is an antenna and you decide to extend the antenna. When we are measuring, we will put the ruler at the tip of the antenna to the end of the tail. So from the mouth to the tail fell between 10 to 12 centimeters. But once you added the antenna, extending it, that's the longest side. It will cross the size, and you lose marks. So if you are, let's see, a little bit creative, just turn it this way. Things on antenna, remember antenna are jointed appendages. So we expect you to show we expect you to show things that are of jointed appendages nature. Assuming, I'm not saying the fish has. So if it's jointed appendages.
something about this nature that makes it jointed. Don't use single line for this. Or flagellum, then use single line for these things. If you want more, this topic has been treated on our Joy YouTube, Joy Learning YouTube. Go there and just Google or type in biological drawing and you will get much of this. Now let's go to the next one. The same thing, but I want to show you something. Whenever there is a cut surface, there is a tomato that your teacher will cut the surface and place it. Use uh, the transverse side facing upwards, where you look at. Once you draw, when you are drawing anything of a cut surface, you see these two lines shown. Anything cut, you have to have double lines. So if it's an egg and you draw the first one this way, there have to be a second one showing the cut surface. So if it was the operculum of the fish that it to, the, we were told to remove it, when you get there, you show a double line. It, we interpret that uh, you've cut something. So anything that we see you draw is within or just beneath the surface that you have removed. So follow that instructions very well. Now let's go to another set of questions. They may ask you for habitats. So A is onion. What is the habitat of onion? It's found on the farmland. B, parmesium, pond ditches. So on your screen are a list of organisms and they may ask you for their habitat. Now watch how they ask the question. Name the habitat. State the habitat. The another one, state three different water bodies in which specimen A and B are found. They are still talking about habitat. Another question they usually also ask is after habitat, they ask you for this question in two ways. Futures. They may ask it in this way. Observable features, features or observable features with a function. We'll get to that second part. So the first one, if they say list six observable features, of let's say specimen D, or in this case, earthworm. They just said, list them, mention them. So what can you see on the organism? Presence of cheetah or chitas, presence of mouth and anus, presence of excretory pore, presence of clitellum, body is soft, body is segmented. If it's an, if it's an insect, pair of antenna, pair of wings, pair, uh, three pair of legs. If you can see the abdomen segmented, you put it there. A pair of eyes. These are just things that you could observe. They didn't say do anything. Then we move on to the adaptive type. If the adaptive type, they are going to ask you how the organism is able to live within its environment or habitat successfully. They may come in varied forms. So let's look at some on your screen. State two adaptive features of uh, each of specimen A, B, C, and D to its habitat. State three observable features which adapt specimen E to its mode of life. They can also say state structures on the organism and how it functions to enable it surviving within its habitat is the same as adaptive features. So if they use structure and function, and they use adaptive features, it's the same thing. Three features of adaptation of specimen A to its habitat. State two other features of specimen C which adapt the specimen to its habitat. State three observable features which contribute to the survival of specimen I. See how they put it. Contributes to the survival of specimen I. And as it so, so it survives somewhere in the habitat. 
So another way of asking you adaptive features is to put it another way. Now let's take a fish as what they ask this on. What are the adaptive features of fish? Remember we did the earthworm. The earthworm was just list of several features. So in the features, you just wrote presence of clitellum, presence of this, presence of that, possesses that. Finished. Now here, when you mention any structure on the organism, tell us what they use it for. So presence of a lateral line system for detecting vibration in water. So here you get two marks. If you're able to write only this, you get one mark. But if you write this second one alone without the first one, you get zero mark. Tail fin propels the body forward. A dark dorsal and pale ventral side makes detection from above difficult. So anything you mention, tell us its function. If they don't use the word adaptive features or adaptation, they'll use structure and function. So on your screen is just a, a sample of using a fish to illustrate this. Let's move on. We have a lot to do. Okay. Now let's look at other adaptation questions. These are what we call specific adaptation questions. The first one we did was to the habitat. Anything on the organism. It's just that you can see with your eye. Don't write anything internal. Don't say it as... Uh, gale, let's say you can't see the gills or you have lungs for breathing. Don't use that once. Only things you can see on the external. Now let's look at this. State was our feature of specimen F, weevil, which is used for feeding. Here, a feature and its function or purpose for a specific thing. So for a specific thing like feeding. What do they have? Rostrum. That specific thing. So what did they use it for? For boring or, or piercing, boring and chewing. After boring, they will chew. Something like that. Something simple. State two features of specimen C and E, which adapt the specimen to their feeding habits. The same thing. State two other feature with, with which specimen A or butterfly obtains its food. We all know it has a proboscis. So they are asking you how they use it. So presence of maybe cord or long proboscis for what? Stay to other features of specimen D, which help it to escape predation. This one they limited the whole adaptation to predation. So if it is let's say centipede, they are flat. So they can what hide under in crevices or under stones or wood or litter. They have poisonous claws to inject poison. They are, their color blends with the environment. Something like that. So you see, you mentioned something and it functions. Now the same was for cockroach. Now another one is used for locomotion. Maybe how do what structures do they use for locomotion? Maybe presence of wings for flying, legs for walking, this for hopping, or webbed hind feet for swimming, tail fin for swimming. They are asking you a specific adaptation. Now another form of also asking. Look at the last one. Structure or adaptation which enable the organism to live in exposed terrestrial habitat. So the question may come in different ways. So something they have and they're able to live in their habitat. Now, another one is mention the mode of nutrition of specimen A. Let's say lava. What is the mode of nutrition? Holozoic or heterotrophic. Look at how they ask it. Mode of nutrition. State three ways by which specimen D improves the growth of plant. These are what we call the other questions. Any question can come. Any related question. State the trophic level of specimen A. If you have a lava, depending on where you are looking at, for it can be primary or 
uh, secondary, or you say second traffic or third traffic. Something same. So always you have the organism and connected questions. And this one comes from the theory you know a lot. And by looking at the organism in front of you, the relationship between A and B, these are what we call the relationship question. This one was lava, mosquito lava, and the pupa. What's the relation between a mosquito lava and its pupa? Pupa, uh, lava will grow to pupa. Lava will feed enough to help pupa go through metamorphosis. The amount of food they consume will determine the length of metamorphosis and its ability to change to adult. Yes, before I go on, one thing we don't want in practicals is the word help. When I go to the adaptation, they use the wings help the cockroach to fly. You get it wrong. The wing is used for flying, so it doesn't help. You should know your facts. So don't use the word help anywhere writing anything in these biology exams. Go straight to the point. Also, don't mostly use the word it. It states the structure of the organism. The wings, not it, makes it fly. Another kind of question, let's go back to our slide. Another on D, name two classes of food that specimen A provide in human nutrition. Probably brought you fish. What do they give to us? Now they gave you rats. How do you identify the sex of the rat? Then after identify, they say give reasons. If the, the rat was a female, usually there will be nipple, there will be less a vagina, or something. So they ask you, give us the reason. Name the adult form of specimen B. If you have a tadpole, what is the adult form of tadpole? You know, it's a toad. So you see, our questions are tricky. You may take it for granted. We know it's a toad. We know. You are going to start with small t. We know simple things that you rush without taking time. You go and you just write toad. T O a D, small t, you get into trouble. Then they can also tell you construct a food chain. So I give about four things here. How do you construct a food chain between algae, a bony fish, a tadpole, and a lizard? Probably A would be fed on by C, but there's this thing, this arrow. If you don't bring the arrow, and let's say B, if you don't bring this arrow, <coughs> Sorry. Then it's not a food chain. Same with evolutionary trend or complexities. Always use an arrow. That arrow carries marks. Then they ask another connecting question. Explain the effect of introduction of more specimen C into the habitat. Let's move on. State two economic importance of specimen B. Let's say a B. What is the economic importance? I believe at this stage, get your books. Get the basic organisms. Have your knowledge. Write things in straight points and get ready for this week's exams. So B, bees, pollination, making honey, the stingers, wax, these few things. Disease. House fly. Outline five ways by which the spread of this disease can be prevented. So they ask you four diseases caused by house fly. How do you prevent it? That's control. Describe briefly any two features of special interest of, let's say, a praying mantis or a tadpole or a house fly or adult house fly. Let's use a tadpole. When you look at it very uh, carefully, you will see a long probably called intestine. If it's at the external gill stage and you can see the external gills, you write that. You can see a tail. Write that. These are what you call biological interest. What is so unique? Uh, no organism have it. So what is so unique about it that you've seen? State it. Don't think too much. It's on the organism. If it's a fish, what is so unique? Maybe a lateral line, skill, a fin, operculum. Write it. These are things of biological interest to be the scientist. 
So, and they will also ask you, as we have features for sensory in function. Sensory, they, are, they have a cockroach. What are things on the cockroach that are sensory in function? We have the antenna, we have the anna celsi, or sessa, as some people call it. It's the same thing. So, two things, just two sensory things. If it's on the rat, you have the whiskers. So, because as you state the feeding habits of any of them, the feeding habits, how do they feed? Are they filter feeders? Are they saprophytic? Are they holozoic? They also ask you state one health hazard caused by a female cockroach. They are trying to ask you how they spread or the kind of disease they spread. So, when you understand the question, it becomes so easy for you to know what we want. Because remember, if they say state one health hazard, you can't write two, because if you write two and the second one is right and the first one is wrong, you are wrong. No two ways about it. Keep it in your head. Outline two measures each by which the population of specimens C and D can be controlled. That's controlled measures. Based on the observable features, state two possible effects of C and D on crop production. So this one, they limit you on... The organ, let's say they give you termite, and they are limiting you on the economic importance of termite to crop production. They didn't ask you for everything, just on crop production. This is how we limit you to let you see if you can think on the spot. Name one way by which a farmer can control C and D, and all these other questions. Now let's go to our popular question. Table of difference. It's so funny that students will still get this thing wrong. From form one to form three, you still get these things wrong. Very easy to tackle it. So they can tell you state five observable differences. They can say similarities. If they don't want this, they use the word compare. Once they say compare, start with your table of difference, they'll come to your similarities. If you do it the opposite, it's the same. So if they use the word compare, they're asking you for the two things. One, we answer difference. Another stage, answer similarities. So most when you get to this, I say both specimen A and B have the following, or both possesses one, two, that. So you don't need to write a table and put it left and right. No. But in different table of difference, you do so. Another way of asking you on your screen is list four external features which are common to both C and D, external feature similarities. Tablet four differences in the external features. In the olden times, when they say tablet and you don't use a table, it was minus one. Because there was a rule. They, any rule that they give you in practicals or biology that you don't follow, they penalize you for that. Then they move on. How do specimen D C and D, third point fish, obtain oxygen. So this one, you won't see it taking place. But here, they require your theory that you know in the theory paper or the knowledge you know on third pool and fish, how they get oxygen. You're supposed to bring it here and write it well, usually five marks or so. Then when you're writing things that are a little bit descriptive, just use simple sentences. Fish, uh, water, mouth is open for water to enter the mouth, full stop. Floor of mouth is lowered, full stop. More water enters, full stop. The lower, the floor of the mouth is raised, another full stop. Forcing water to pass over the gills. Don't write lungs and therefore, hence, then you just confuse us. Don't. If you want to use dash, just use dash and write, dash and write, dash and write. The other one is how do, they, how do bony fish adapt to its mode of nutrition? So list the other features. State two features of the gill of specimen D, which makes it efficient respiratory structure. So you see this one is a little bit of theory that you know in class. Because you see the structure, you don't see it in action or in its function. But they expect you to know and they want you to write it 
out for us. Now let's look at the table of difference. I took only one as an example for you to look at how we write it. The two things in front of you is the tadpole and the bony fish. Look at how we word it and how we pair them. We start with the limbs. On tadpole, we are talking about limbs. What is the issue of limbs on tadpole and the same on bony fish? So we are saying limbs, that's limbs or limb bud are present in fish, uh, sorry, in tadpole. Limbs and limb bud are absent. So we start with the same sentence and we made a conclusion of what is on one and what is absent on the other. So you just add present, absent. Don't say limbs or limb bud are present. Then specimen D, do not have limbs. <laughs> Usually we see it, do not have limbs. It's wrong. Or they don't have limbs. It's wrong. So it was there, it was not there. So absent and present. You spoke about skills. Skills are absence on tadpole. Skills are present on bony face. It makes it easy for us to know what you are talking about. Lateral line absent, lateral line present. Has one unpaired fin, has many unpaired fins. So you see that when we are looking for the thing called the difference, so we'll be able to just look for one thing. Okay, it's here, it's not there. One mark. You, all these points cause one mark. This size cause one mark. So we don't mark here one and come and mark here one so that you get two here. No. So you can say you got the right, the left side correct and got the right side wrong. We have to compare both before you get one mark. So on your screen are a few others that you should look at. So we will then go to plant. What we just did was the general ones usually of all the lower organisms from prokaryota to protista to fungi to plant, I mean lower plant that you usually study, then to animals. All that we did was most of the ways they will ask you questions on these ones. Now let's zoom into plants. They may bring you any plant, either the flower part, the full plant, a twig, the root, uh, an organ, let's say a vegetative organ, anything can be presented to you. The way they could present anything from when we studied the other one, we saw gills, question on gills, they can bring you gills, they can dissect an organism for you, they can let you look at a liver, you can look at a kidney. All these ones have come in our exams. They can bring you seeds of some plants. So just open up. Most of you go with preconceived ideas. How you get to know that when nobody knows, but you go with straightforward answers. And when you get there and some questions are tricky, you don't even look at it for the second time to know how to write it. Then you just have to pour what you know on the paper. No. For practical, if you are smart, even if you have forgotten anything, just look at the organism very carefully and you get something to write. Take your time and look at it well. Okay. Let's say they give you a tradax plant. So on the screen, we have right on features of biological interest in the following. They gave you a stem and leaf of specimen. Let's say C, a tradax. What is so unique that looking at the stem and leaves, what is it? Can you see some hairs on it? the shape of the thing, uh, of the leaf. Uh, do you see the venation type? What is so unique that you can observe? That's all that they're asking you. But it should be of biological interest to any scientist. 
who, when it takes this thing, will be so interested to know, oh, the leaf margin is serrated or is smooth. It's networked or reticulate venation. There are hairs on it. It is maybe succulent leaf. It maybe has thick cuticle. Anything that biologically we've taught you, that you think you can observe on it, write it. So as, I said, as I said today, is to expose you to most of the way we ask our questions. Give you a mental picture, broad mental picture of what you expect and how to calm down and answer them. So I'm not here trying to give you answers. It's just to expose you and prevent you from making mistakes. So don't panic. Now, reproductive part of specimen C. What are, if you have a flower, what is the reproductive part of the flower? So the, the C is of the reproductive part of the flower. That's what they wanted. What is the biological interest? Did you see the colors? Is it dark colored? Is it brightly colored? Are the petals broad? Do you see nectar guide? Did you see how many... Uh, Andre, uh, Andreasium, let me say the statement, did you see? How many carpels did you see? That's all they're asking you. So apply all the biology we've taught you. Hmm. State the class to which specimen C belongs. So C, for example, is a dicotyledonia. Now, usually students do this mistake. They write, Class small c. Usually let's start with remember big C class. Die cotyledonia. Now this is where students will end. Cotyledon. Sound right? Dicot. All these ones are wrong. The last three words or letters we want is this E A E word. A e letters. If you change it and you write A E A, anything that you do here, this last thing, can let you lose your one mark. Probably to you spot all this correct, but it started with a small d. You also lose one mark. So take your time and remember what we are doing today on Joy Learning. And go to the exam so. This little mistake, one mark, little mistake, one mark, little mistake. See that the mistakes are things you can avoid. A title of a drawing, the size of a drawing, using, not having woolly lines, using a ruler to rule them. Spell everything if one word with capital. Scientific words, if, if it's scientific words, underline them as we've taught you. These petty, petty things. One mark, one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark then you lose everything. They mentioned one similarity between specimen A, B, C, and D. Maybe they gave you, as you saw just beneath it, grass, water leaf, moss, and crotalaria. What is similarity among all these things? So go get some, your notes, look at it well, find answers. Arrange A, B, C, and D in order of complexity, from the simplest to the most complex. So a grass, a water leaf, a moss, and a crotalaria. They are trying to take you back to your bryophyta, philicinophyta, uh, angiospermophyta, within the angiospermophyta, monocot and dicot, which one comes first? So this application, you should know much about these things. So that you can arrange it. And when you arrange it, I said it, let there be an arrow. So maybe three marks. Correct arrangement. A, this is to that. Then no arrow, you lose a mark. So then they can also ask you flower formula. So your screen is the crotalaria flower formula. If it is bilateral, you have this sign. If it is radar, this 
one that have both the male and female sex together. If it has only female, you draw the down part, this one without, so female, only female. If it's a male, only having andresium, then you draw this. So when it has both, you say hermaphrodite, you draw this sign that you see on your screen. Now for crotalaria, you go on to the calyx, K. That's the outer, or we could say the sepals. That one, they are five, they are fused. Now you go to the corolla, that's the petal. There are five petals there of three different sizes. Two of them are the same, another two is the same, and one is very big. So you show it with plus signs. Then you go to the andresium. Some will have it 5 plus 5. Depending on how you look, others will have the 9 plus 1. Others will say 10. Just put it together. But this is andresium 9 or 10. Now let's look at the gene, the gynesium. Once we put a mark or a line beneath it, it means that the female part, the ovary, is sitting, we use the word, a certain biological way of saying it's sitting on top of the other flower part. Then we say, that's not how we have to put it, it's not sitting, but we say it's positioned above the others. But students usually say sitting on, it's wrong. It's positioned above the other floral parts. So we say it's a superior ovary. If I should put it, if I should put the other flower uh, sign using a bar above, and the gene is below, then we are saying that the ovary is beneath all the floral parts. So it becomes an inferior ovary. So if you have this, it becomes if you have gene this way, it becomes Then they go on to ask you other questions. State the agent of pollination of specimen K, giving reasons. So what are the agents of a dye coat dyes have brightly colored, if you know, at this stage, maybe insects. Then they say, give us reasons. So the agent to be an insect and the reasons. So, for example, insect pollinated plant. So use the idea to write this. Now, what is the symmetry? As we showed here, the sign on your screen for the, the uh, right crotalaria asymmetry is bilateral. So this is bilateral. So this is radar. And this one is bilateral. Now, and then they also ask, as I began, mention biological interests of Crotalaria. What is their common name? Maybe they may ask you a plant for its common name. Now, name it placentation. And by this time, you should know placentation like free central, marginal, axial, uh, basa. Know all this. And check the spellings for the parieta. So please, go check the spellings well. When they say marginal, capital M. Free central, capital F. They mentioned two elements found in the class of food produced by that. So if the crotalaria should produce a fruit or anything, what is the class of food within that? So then they've moved from the normal plant and they've moved into nutrition. Then they can tell you to perform an experiment on it or write an experiment to determine whatever you say. If you say it's protein, then they move on, right? Experiment for protein. If it's, uh, let's say, starch, and you got, if it's carbohydrate, and you know the starch there, they ask you to write an experiment for it. So be broad minded. Let's move on. Comment 
on features of biological importance of an orange or a coconut? <laughs> Anything. What do you know about coconut? Now, let's state three economic. So, let's look at the drawing for that. So, the specimen K. So, you see what I said? A label drawing of specimen K. But sometimes, for this drawing, they can give you, uh, let's say, an activity to do before you draw. So, let's look at some of the activities they will tell you to do before you draw. Carefully detach two petals from specimen I, making sure that the special petal is left intact. So you should know what that special petal is. I said there are two, two plus one. Make a label drawing 10 to 12 centimeters long of the remaining portion of specimen I. So they didn't say go and draw the full, draw, uh, the full flower. Specific instructions. Using the scalpel or knife or razor blade provided, cut through specimen C longitudinally, dividing it into two equal halves. So, actually, they are trying to let you know it's maybe it's a bilateral symmetry flower. Make a label drawing of 8 centimeters to 10 centimeters long of one half. So, as you Divide it into to draw one side. So when you draw, you're supposed to see the ovary part with the ovals arranged, the andresium, the petals, and the sepals coming on to the receptacle, then the stalk. Then they moved on. Classify specimen I, the fly into phylum and class. So if it's usually to be division, if it's a plant, they'll use the word division. So in the division, you say division, let's say angiospermophyta. Then the class monocotyledonia or dicotyledonia. Not dicot or dicotyledon. Check it well. Same thing, state three pollinating agents of specimen I. Now let's look at these two. Other plant questions can come in the type of fruit of the plant. Let's say they gave it tomato. What is the type of fruit in tomato? We know this one, they are specifying it. So some students will go and write, let's say, succulent fruit. They know it's succulent because the groups there. Is it a droop? Is it a berry? Sometimes we will move on to purple. It's paridium. So which one are they asking you? So you should know where tomato belongs to. That's a berry. Then give two other examples. So now it's not only what is there. They say bring more on board other two examples. So don't go to the exam room fixed in your mind. It's like another theory paper. But this one, it starts with the organism and they keep widening up the question. So if that means they can usually ask draw something in terms of an organism, no, but they will look at the organism, start from that, and start expanding it. Then they say, is specimen H a true fruit or a false fruit? Give one reason for that. So you know true fruits, how they are fertilized, and how we got it. If it's a false fruit too, you should know false fruits, how they are formed. Now, state the food class present in specimen H, and that's tomato. What is the food? So they've taken us back to nutrition. Is it carbohydrate? Is it protein? Are there vitamins? Are there minerals? Then they move on. Another set of questions, different from the tomato. State the mode of vegetative propagation of specimen K, onion, and cassava stem, L. How do we propagate this? A stem cutting and a, a bulb. How do we provide? So you mentioned that. State the biological significance of specimen key. When you take the onion, is there anything 
unique that baffle you, interest you, that you want to look at as a biologist? Maybe scale leaves, maybe succulent leaves, maybe foliage leaves, maybe underground stem, something, or adventitious root, something you see on the onion. Now state the part of the plant to which each of specimens see that's a ginger and carrot belongs to. You know a ginger is a stem and a carrot is a root. That's all that they are asking you. I believe you can handle such questions in the exams. Then how can you propagate specimen gene? So then you go to the tape propagate gene method of how we put specimen gene in the soil and how they grow. Another question that also came was, they gave us crotalaria, and they just said, describe the following specimen, so so and so, E. The andresium alone, they limited you to andresium. So for this one, you take the flower, you look at the length, whether it's longer than the other part or shorter, you look at the color, you look at the anther, how many anther are there, they look at the number of stamen. Are they six? Are they eight? Are they nine? Are all the nine the same? Are they more than nine? Are they more than ten? If you go to the exams and the flower formula is more than ten, you use the infinity sign. So if you write and you get to A and it's more than ten, use the infinity sign. Then they ask you for the gynesium. Usually, you may think gynesium, oh, most times you see one capel or a pistil. But look at the top well. You'll find out that maybe the stigma may be more than one. So they're asking you, what do you observe? If you can cut through and you get to the ovary, and you want to talk about the ovary, you talk about them. So the andresium, gynesium, the andresium alone, is it fused, free, or united? So we say syncarpus, monocarpus, we say fused and free. Now, B, another set of questions. State the type of fruit born by specimen E. Usually, the fruit is a legume or a pod nature. So if they ask you, usually those ones that shake that can undergo the split mechanism. For this one, this is what they do. They are asking you. They are testing your knowledge. The mode of dispersal of the fruit specimen, uh, specimen is explosive mechanism. Probably you took coconut. How will you transport it? How will you disperse it? Water. If it's tomatoes. Maybe man. Bats. Insects. Sorry, birds. They eat these tomatoes. So they carry it along through their feces or they even drop it. Now, suggest the possible means of pollination of specimen A. So, another example, let's say it's a crotalaria. How do they pollinate it? It's insect pollinated. Then give us three reasons why you say they are insect pollinated. So the down one is agent of disperser. All these are questions that can drop on our paper come this week. Now let's look at something that they can also give to you. Instead of telling you to write, they give you a table. And the table, they give you number of flower parts, number of, number of flower parts. Okay, so the name, let's say, Sepa. How many sepals were there? Well, what's the color? Maybe green. Fused or free? Let's say free. But if two are free, two are fused, you write in that form. So you say two free, two fused. For fused, if it's in the flower formula, you put it in a bracket. Let's say two. That means it's fused. Is that part essential or non-essential part of a Flower. Sepals are non-essential. The only essential parts are the andresium and the gynesium. 
So they tell you to fill this table for us. So easy to get almost 20 marks from this. So these are also the same thing that this one was where they asked specifically to get down to whether it's inferior or superior ovary. So they told the students to remove all the stamen and three petals from the flower, then make a drawing of the specimen A. Then they ask what type of ovary is present in A? What type of ovary? Superior or inferior ovary? That's what they're asking. So after removing the part, you have to check where the, the bulgy part or bulging part of the female is. Find out whether all the other parts are beneath it. Then it becomes superior. But if the other parts are on top, as the star comes, the other part meets it before the bulging part, then we say it is what? An inferior ovary. So they say go on and describe the petal and sepals of A. What is the function of a special a petal? State three features of A which have led to the success of the flowering plant. What have made it? This one is adaptation. Another way of asking you, what do they have? How have they lived in their habitat successfully? So this is another adaptation question. Now let's go on to mammals and look at mammals questions. Now for mammals, there are very few questions usually ranging on digestion, enzymes, and food tests, and vertebra, and specific organs in our body. They may give you a food test. It can happen. Then you have to do a test, observe it, and make an inference. So let's say specimen A, assuming it's Gary plus iodine. What do you observe? Blue. Inference, probably. Simple. What did you do? Tell us what you did. What you observed. And the inference. And they give you a lot to do. So it's not always you are going to write. They like giving tables to us too. So this is for... Mammals. They can also cut the elementary canal of a mama and put it in front of us. Then they can tell us to identify the level of organization in the specimen. Once they cut the elementary canal, we are dealing with the system. If they brought, let's say, a liver out alone, a kidney out alone, they are dealing with an organ. Then whatever they display, they said, list five structures that form the displayed part of specimen C. Then state one function, each of the structures you've listed in CI above. So what you are doing is slightly adaptation. So stomach for what? Duodenum for what? Pancreas for what? Gallbladder. So the gallbladder for what? The liver for what function? The colon for what function? The ileum for what function? That's all the action. Another question you have that can identify as a cervical vertebra and describe briefly its features. Does it have long neural spine or not? Is it short? What about its centrum? What about its neural canal? Are, they transverse, are there transverse processes? This is what they ask you in the exams. Remember, those statements are very short. No more than five, six sentence, words. 
Now let's zoom on to graph work quickly and other questions that comes. We may not be able to, I'll give you a minute to read what is on your screen. Then we'll zoom in to using the values. Remember, this is a revision show. We assume and we believe you have a pretty idea. We'll correct the mistakes as you go to the exams. So they carried an experiment using nitrogen MPK fertilizer of putting the soil of one batch of pots. Then they, after a week, planted and treated with the fertilizer look green than the other. Then the plant of both batch were then put under one large linoleum mesh cage and 50 female cabbage white butterflies at the egg laying stage were released into the cage. The number of each of the butterflies found on the plant were recorded each day. The table below shows the egg count for two badges of the plant. So this is how the question will come. Remember, identify which one is the independent variable or factor and the dependent variables. In this experiment, and always our independent variable goes to the x axis. And these two, which are the dependent, goes to the y axis. Bring all that you know in mathematics here, all the graph work they've taught you, how to pick a skill. At this stage, it's not for us to teach. You already know it in core. Then, how to label every graph. Every graph should have a title. So having a title one mark, labeling X and Y, you have marks. Uh, having your skill rightly, let's say zero, move to this, that, that, you get marks. On the Y2, you give your values. So let's look at an example. Now they will tell you that Plot two graphs using the data above on a single sheet of graph paper using the same axis. Two graphs on one sheet. Then describe the graph you've drawn. Explain the result. And stay three. These are the other questions they will ask. Now let's use the real drawing that the real thing. This is a picture of what came. Now let's look at it. The x axis we saw in the question here was. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then the mean value of, the, of each egg per plant treated with fertilizer. So you are going to plot this. Let me call this A and B. You start with plotting A's value 40 to 1, 130 to 2, 240 to 3, 330 to 4, 450 to 5, 570 to 6. When you are done, so for us to do it using the A, you can use a symbol like this. When you get to B, you can use a triangle with a dot to tell us that B is the one with triangle with a dot, whilst A is the shaded round dot. So when you get to B, you take 45 against 1, 100 against 2, 160 against 3, 180 against 4, 190 against 5, 195 against 6, what we call the plotting of the points, the x and y point. So let's go to the graph. Now because the values down here were 1, 2, 3, 4, and were equal, we just could start 0 to 1. In some graphs, the values starting from 0 to 1 is a little bit wide. Let's say starting at 36. Some may decide to drag it. Others to start at 36 at this point. So whenever you start plotting, that means the first plot will have to start on the Y line where you join the points. Because that point 36 against a Y value will be on that Y point. Note it. So depending on the values they will bring, you know whether you can leave a gap between 0 and 1 or you have to 
drag it, or you have to start on the Y line, depending on the values they will give to you. And you should know this from your commas. Now watch it. So you see that the first one started this way up with shaded points. And then A, and we have B. Watch how it was joined. Here, you use a ruler to join the points. You don't use your free hand. You use a ruler to join the points. Then we gave a title to the X as a time after release of butterfly into cage. Then on the Y as is mean number of egg per plant. Then you plot. After that, they will ask you to describe the graph. We use words like, if it's going up, we say it will rise sharply or gently. It can also fall or decline. Same sharply, gently. Or you can use the word steep. It can remain the same. So if you remain the same, it that it's horizontal. So they tell you to describe it. And how do we describe it? So you say from one, for this one, the top one, less the top one is so steep. So from one to six. Mean time, sorry, time after release of butterfly. From day one to six. Rows from whatever point, or let's say 49. Sharply to five, let's say 50. This one was very easy. But let's look at this, the B part. From 1 to 3, there was a change. And from 3 to 6, there's another change. So between 1 to 3, it rose gently. From 3 to 6, sorry, between 1 to 3, it rose gently from 49 to, let's say, 150. That's how we say it. Then from 3 to 6, we say that on the Y, we say that from day 3 to day 6, the mean number of eggs per plant remained same. It remained the same because hardly did this change. It was not a gent. It was almost the same. Or it was constant. So somebody without even looking at the graph can understand. Then there are other questions they can ask. Now let's go to another type of question. This is a histogram question. I think we faced one recently. This one, they gave you 20 students, gave you raw data, asked you to tally it, then get the class intervals, find the modal height, find the mean height, and the median height. So this is pure mathematics. Then construct a histogram how many students fell in each of the height, uh, height extremes. Then they went on to find a difference in the height between the shortest and the tallest student. What type of variation is the height? Many, many questions. Let's see what we expected of you. We expected you to tally them per the instruction, get their frequency, and get their cumulative frequency. Then from this, we move to mathematics. You are supposed to plot this for us. You could have left a gap, one gap here, but can also, as I said, push it onto the line. It's accepted. Then you graph it using the rules of histogram. 149 to 153, 154 to 158, 159 to 163, and that order. Then you follow the rules of how to calculate a modal height, a mean. A mean is just the average. So you, calc you add all the height divided by number of students, you get your mean. Then the median and the modal height. The most frequent one. Q 
Okay, let's look at this quickly. Uh, this is a trader's question that came around 2009 or 10 there about where they give the student something drawn a bar chart. It's not a bar chart I'm so interested in. I'm interested in how to calculate the population density and the population size. So they give the student this data, and this is the frequency. Frequency means when you use a quadrat and you throw the quadrat around, each time you throw, what, how many uh, grasses or specimens did you count? That's what they were asking. So they kept throwing it around, they asked you, what did you get? So they insisted that we work on trade acts. So trade axe value was 33. So frequency, whenever you trade, you get around 33. That's what they mean. And listen to it. In order to estimate the population of the different weeds in a farmland, that measured 50 meters by 12 meters. A 1 meter by 1 meter quadrat was thrown 10 times. So 10 times, each time they got 33. The result was obtained as follows. They give all these. How do we find the plant with the greatest occurrence? On the table, it was trade ducks. With the least was imperata. Now, how do you find the population density? We say the average number of trade ducks over the unit area. Then the trade ducks was 33. The number of times we had was 10. So to get the average number of trade ducks after the 10 throws, you divide the 33 frequency over the 10. If they gave you raw data, you'd have picked all the raw data, this plus that plus that plus that, divided by 10. Then each was with a 1 meter quadrat. So you are going to divide the 1 meter quadrat, so it's be a 1 meter quadrat, against the 3.3 .3 you got. So if it was a 2 by 2 meter quadrat, so if it's a 2 by 2 meter quadrat, you are going to get a 4 meter square. So you would have put 4 meter square here. That's why you need to repeat this particular area. Because we use 1 meter quadrat, most time people jump it and they go straight to calculating the population size. This stage is important because they change the quadrat, we are in trouble. Then Population size, they gave us the area is 50 by 12. So one side, the breadth or length, the length will be 50, the breadth will be 12. If you multiply to get an area, it gets 600. Remember that this is a meter, so the quadrat was one meter. So when you put one meter here, one meter 600 times, we average that every time that you put one quadrat there, you get 3.3. So 3.3 .3 times 600 will give us 1,800 triadacts. So the population for a 600 meter square was about 1,800 triadacts plant. And there were other questions for you to answer related to it. Then we come to the problem of the day. We gave you a prime of day and I'm going to take you through. You can call in to help us answer this prime of day. So the prime of day was this. You were given specimen A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Grasshopper, bony fish, crab, lizard. Rotalaria with flowers, grass, moss, then cut surface of a cooked egg. The first question was study carefully A, B, C. Just study it. B, identify specimen A, B, C, D without reason. So you write the names of the organisms I have here and note it. If you start with this small one, you are in trouble. This small one, you are in trouble. Small one here, you are in trouble. You may lose marks. So start with capital letters. 
Now they say give two reasons in each case. Based on Zebra feature, state the phylum and class to which A, B, C, and D belongs to. So phylum and class. So let's go back. What will be the phylum for grasshopper? We know Arthropoda. Bony fish. What will be its phylum? You can help us in the house. If you call in, you finish bony fish, crabs, lizard, you give us their phylum. Then state the habit that. So let's say I put habitat here. What will be the habitat for grasshopper? Terrestrial. Then you continue. Bony fish, where will you find it? Where can you find the crab? Where can you find the lizard? Now state the adaptive features of so so and so to the habitat. A was grasshopper. How do they live in their habitat? If they are green, maybe their green nature blends with the environment. Antenna for sensing vibration or changes for sensing sensitivity then probably wings for flying legs for walking anything that you can easily identify then make a label drawing of those then there's the C the C was the crab so let's go to C the sea was a crab. What do crabs use to live well in their habitat? I'll leave that to you to also answer. Then let's make a label drawing of the cut surface of H. So I'm going to show you a drawing of this. Yes, this drawing was what students usually do. So I brought the wrong one for you to see. When you cook the egg, when you first, if it's raw, it's uncooked, and you crack it and let the content you out onto a bowl, you see the chalaza, this chalaza. But when you cook the egg, there's no way you see this chalaza. If you do that, then we know you didn't observe what we gave to you. You are drawing from a book or from your brain. So you can't have a chalaza here. Student copy from their head and come to the exams hall. No, when they cut this, you, you just see the yolk, only this yolk in the middle. Another good thing of this drain is that there are two surfaces here, telling us that it's a cut surface. So you see that the shell, they, when they went straight, the third, lane, the third layer was the membrane, telling that this first two is telling that there's a cut surface. So once they use the word cut surface, Show us you understand the biology rules. Then the germinal dex, the embryo, the airspace. You see that we still have the double layer here before we create the embryo. Uh, sorry, the space. Anytime you crack the big side or the blunt side, where we usually used to hit a, so, a hard surface so that we can remove the shell, that side. Is where we have the air sacs. Now look at the title there. So a label drawing, I didn't say diagram, of the cut surface because that's why it's not a full egg. Then the longest side is what you are drawing, the longitudinal section of, I didn't say cooked egg, I say specimen H. Keep it that way. So you have your title. One, your size, they give us six to eight. Let's assume it's right. Let's look for mistakes. Ah, double surface is there. So, neatness of label, they used a ruler. Clarity of lines. Eh, some woolly here. Eh, some outline is not the same. So, let's say two mistakes, we get zero. 
let's say uh, double membrane shown yoke shown air space shown then let's say we want four labels i have label of four but i'll lose max sorry labels of two So I labeled four things, but because it's a two mark, uh, four things by half, you get two. I lose marks for magnification, zero, because I didn't write any times whatever here. So I get zero for magnification. So you see, even guiding you through, see the uh, wrongs we got, about two wrongs. And these two can change you from one grade to another. So I beg you, my student listening to us, avoid these petty, petty mistakes. Then they said, specimen, state as phylum and class of E, F, and J. Arrange E, F of J in complexity. Stay for the difference between E and F. State the flower formula of E, which was crotalaria. Remember, I brought you moss, grass, and uh, crotalaria. So let's go back E, F, and G. So, which one is the least? Is G. Arrow to which one? Grass comes before. So you write F. Then you write E. Or I brought an arrow. So if you don't bring the arrow, you get this thing wrong. So there is the order of complexity between the plant-based organisms. Then they ask you for flower formula of E, which is crotalaria, before I dealt with it. So take a lot of plants, get their flower formula, and to be easy for you to answer this. Then they ask you, what is the dispersal of E, assuming it had a fruit? And we know it was the legume of pod nature. It would be an explosive mechanism. Then they may ask you reasons why. And you're supposed to be able to explain why it is by explosive mechanism. So I believe today we've run you through random set of questions possible ones, giving you guide against mistakes that you usually do or pitfalls that students usually do. And we say, please, you're on our knees. Don't do these mistakes. You can easily get 70 marks to 80. You can even get all the 80 correct if you follow simple rules, such as what? Start everything with a capital. Start si si single words with a capital. Classification with a capital. Name of organisms with a capital. Usually, people write cockroach, and you see the first C is not so big. The K seems to be very big than the C, and you're not so clear. Then when you write things like, uh, T, people will put a dash somewhere here. And we don't know whether this T, the dash is crossing the T or what. It's petty, petty mistakes. Her writing should be legible for us to see. Should be okay. Drawing should not use pen. Titles. These petty, petty things. You can easily score all marks. So I believe today we've achieved our aim, giving you confidence for our upcoming exams. Go to the exams, study it first, identify the things, follow the rules of spelling, make sure your spellings are correct. Then if they say answer two things, don't write three, write only two correct ones. Simple, straightforward phrases. Presence of, absence of, possesses, Three body divisions, presence of antenna, straightforward. So phylum, class, order. All these ones should start with capital. 
Palom Atropoda, capital A. Pa, uh, class Arachnida, capital A. Class Insecta, capital I, not class Insect. All the class has a way, Angiospermophyta, Dicotyledonia. Don't make these mistakes. And follow all instructions in a table form, table form. The disease gives us the disease. Draw, draw. If a graph should come, remember every graph has what? A title. Every graph has a skill. And you have to explain the skill to us too. So you would explain the skill and the uh, keys you used. Then every graph has labels. Your X and Y axis. Then you plot correctly. Then use a ruler to join them. Then go and answer the other questions. Doing this drawing graph and experiment, usually you get some marks. For experiment, what we don't like is when you are leading us and you make a mistake somewhere, we stop there. So it's leading me through protein test and you make a mistake on the third point. I stop at the third point. And that is the fact, because if I follow it, I don't get the same result. So, wish you all the best. If you have any question, go to our Facebook, go to our Twitter handle, and leave your question. And I'll do well tonight and tomorrow to answer any question you have. We want to see you pass. So soon we come to the end of our today's lesson. Joy together with all the teachers here. Wish you the best in our upcoming exams. You face the 120 mark already. You are going to face the 80 left to make it 200. And you can still get 70 and above to 80 and still score an A, a B2, or a B3. Thanks for being with us. To meet once again, to meet the next time. I'm saying it's bye-bye from Mr. Sir Kwame Martin, your biology.